Hello, and welcome to today's Saratech Enablement Session. My name is Andrea Hall, and I am the Customer Relationship Manager here at Saratech, and I'll be your host today. With us here today, we have Dan Rubio, and he is an Applications Engineer here at Saratech, and he's going to be talking to you about what's new in Solid Edge. Thanks, Andrea. Hope you all are having a great afternoon, morning, depending on where you are. So as Andrew said, my name is Dan Rubio. I've uh, been a, an application engineer with Ceratech uh, going on nine years now. I got my bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering from UCF in Orlando, Florida. And I've been uh, mainly focusing on solid edge and FEMAP, uh, but I also uh, support SimCenter 3D, Flow EFD, NASTRAN, and Motion as well. Uh, also, Andrew did already mention, uh, since we do have so much to cover, this will, this session will be a little bit closer to an hour, but I'll try to go as fast as I can. But obviously, I don't want to uh, you know, not tell you guys all the great new things that are coming with Solid Edge 2021. So I'm going to start with the question, where can digital transformation take you? How can you use this digital transformation to make your business more productive and more profitable? Now, there's typically been three different main pieces to your business process. You have design, where of course you're, you're doing product design and development. Then you have to realize those products. You have to turn them into products through uh, whatever manufacturing and other production processes you have. And finally, you have to optimize those products. Typically, uh, this could be a long process after you get them out into the field uh, to be able to get data back and figure out how to make your products better. What's happening is these worlds are, are, are colliding or collapsing. The design, the manufacturer, the optimization, they're all pulling tightly together. So you have to think of this digital twin is what we're shooting for. And it's not so much just a CAD di digital twin, but it, it's a, a manufacturing digital twin where you have that data from the field in this tight closed loop uh, and you're bringing that back into design and manufacturing to make your products better. So this is what uh, Accelerator enables, is this digital transformation. And you, we have this comprehensive digital twin at, at its core. Uh, we have design, uh, realize, and optimize. So we're, we're talking about things like model-based systems, collaboration, and analytics, uh, all that to create this unique digital fabric, uh, getting you uh, really to this almost futuristic uh, digital twin. Now, it's very important to understand that Solid Edge is so much more than just a CAD system like it was many years ago. Uh, sure, it has the best mechanical design in the marketplace, but what about the rest of the things that you as a business uh, need to do? Uh, electrical design, simulation, manufacturing, these are all part of this Solid Edge portfolio, along with uh, even more things like technical publications, data management, uh, regardless of how small or large you are, you, you, can, you should always be managing your data and now cloud-based collaboration as well. So this full portfolio of Solid Edge that I'm talking about is not only available for commercial customers uh, like most of you, but also to students in academic institutions and even startup companies. So rather than being just an MCAT, a mechanical CAT solution, we have this ability to have uh, that MCAD with the electronics, with the technical publications, all of that stuff I just showed you. And it's all available and completely free for students and startups. Now, with all that out of the way, let me uh, go ahead and introduce Solid Edge 2020 and how it can help you with this uh, digital transformation journey, whether you already started or uh, you haven't really delved into that yet. Now, I'm going to be using this data set to talk through a lot of these enhancements, and, and it's this machine that makes uh, ice pops, uh, popsicles. So I wanna thank uh, this customer, Finimac. And they had this great idea. They said, how can we take aerospace technology and apply it to machines that make ice cream, popsicles, chocolate, things like that. So they really have transformed their business, uh, even disrupting an entire industry by fully leveraging this, this digital transformation I'm talking about. So if we take a look through this uh, catalog they made, we can see all sorts of things, ice cream making machines, chocolate display cases, uh, popsicle machines, mixture preparation machines, all very beautiful designs as you can see here. Now the most amazing thing about this is none of this is real. What you're seeing right now, these are all digital twins. Every picture you see is straight from Solid Edge, rendered and put into this catalog that they made. So you're really seeing the, the, the full realization of this digital twin that Finimac has made. So let's begin with mechanical design, the core of what you do. 
Now this year in 2021, uh, we have new subdivision modeling, uh, very fast reverse engineering, uh, artificial intelligence capabilities, I think it really like, and an intelligent 3D model search engine. Now there's a lot to see here, like I mentioned, but this is just the first section. Let's go through these one by one. First, uh, sub subdivision modeling, then we'll look at reverse engineering, adaptive UI, uh, and then CoreCAD, the stuff you do daily, right? And finally, supplier catalog integration. Again, we're, I'm just going to highlight uh, these since there's so much, uh, but just uh, keep in mind, you know, once it's released, uh, you definitely want to take some time and we can help with that, of course, but really look through all of the what's new documentation to see even the little enhancements that they've made that really make all of our lives much easier. So subdivision modeling, this is an amazing technology that allows anyone to create these beautiful shapes. Now in the past, uh, this was really the domain of, of specialists, right? Who, who knew about these nerves and surfacing and all these complicated things, uh, but now anyone can create these organic shapes. So let's jump into this Finimac machine and we'll focus on the design of this uh, portable controller you see. So this sub D modeling enables you to develop these distinctive organic shaped products. Again, and you don't need to have this expert surfacing and, and, and curve knowledge. So if you're not the best at surface modeling, uh, this is really your chance to shine. So we'll start with these industrial design images as a guide, as you saw. Now this sub D modeling can be simplified into three steps. You have the initial shape, as you see, you have control cage where you're pushing and pulling, and then you can also add blending. So we started with that initial box shape. We pushed out the, the lower edges uh, to make a, a trapezoid, if you will. And then we added some splits. So we're, we're adding this, uh, this raised region for the screen and also uh, even a cut region where the actual uh, screen is going to be placed. Now this control cage, as you can see, can, fit, can be adjusted uh, very easily and directly. All right, so a simple lift operation there adds the necessary faces uh, to the model. Then we, uh, we can see some blend operations and, and you can even control how sharp or smooth some of those edges are. All right, as you can see here, uh, a lot of parts need to be designed, uh, need to be designed symmetrically. So as you can see, it is very easy to add the symmetry plane and your changes will be reflected on the other side. Now, for those of you familiar with synchronous technology and the steering wheel, as you can see, that capability is right in here in sub D modeling. So with a few pushes and, and pulls, we can create notches in the top of the part, as you can see, and add blends as needed. Now let's go ahead and create the handle. Now we're not gonna cheat by you know, showing some, something that was pre-created in here. We're, we're doing this live, as you can see, uh, it's very easy and, and powerful. So just as before, uh, we start with an initial shape, uh, we extend it, uh, we use a control cage to push and pull and even rotate the shapes and add some blending as well, done. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is you can use traditional techniques like you see here. If, there, if I do have a surface, as you can see, I can simply uh, cut it and then run the thicken command to create that raised portion of the handle. Then you can continue and add more details uh, but look at that. I mean, this normally would have taken hours, if not days, but in 2021 with this sub D modeling, you know, we're talking minutes here to create this, uh, this awesome product. Now I've been, uh, as I said, with Saratech for, for nine years and, and in this industry a while. And, and I've seen, you know, and I'm not a surfacing expert, but I do know some, some experts and they're just in, so impressed by this capability. I mean, you're going from days, uh, to, to hours, if not even minutes, to do something so complex. And one very important thing to, to note here is it's built right into Solid Edge, as you can see. Uh, there's no specialized tools to learn. Uh, there's no other products. It's available to you. Right? If you have uh, Solid Edge Classic or Premium, it's already included. No add-on. All right, here's a simple uh, feedback from uh, Jason Inglis from Ditchwitch. Uh, they make some really impressive earth moving equipment uh, and, and they're really bringing more and more stylized shapes uh, to their products. Um, so they're really excited to see this, this sub D modeling and what, they, uh, what their industrial designers can come up with. Next up is reverse engineering. 
Now that came out uh, several years ago and they uh, Siemens has been uh, continually improving on it, uh, making it faster, adding new features. Uh, so let's look at a few more things they've done. Now this is uh, again, uh, reverse engineering. Uh, it has its own toolbar, uh, but the new capability here is deviation analysis. So this allows you to measure the accuracy between the original scan and your resulting reverse engineered model and even compare uh, two different scans. Now this resulting plot color codes the deviation for very easy interpretation like you see here. The red means our test body exceeds the reference body and the dark blue depicts negative distances. Now you can add on-screen uh, on uh, callouts actually to identify the minimum and maximum deviation, which you can copy and paste uh, for reporting. You can customize the, uh, the settings of course for that deviation range, the decimal places and so on. So as you've seen, there, there's some really great new capabilities in reverse engineering with that deviation analysis. And, and that tells you, you know, how much, uh, you know, how close is this digital twin you've made to the real world uh, product. Next up is adaptive UI. This is a great new technology. I'm really excited to show you. It uses AI, artificial intelligence, to actually predict what you're going to do next. Well, how does it do that? It looks at what you've been doing in the past. It looks at your patterns and then it figures out what you might be doing next and it gives you those options. It's really groundbreaking. So keep your eyes on the top left of the screen here. Solid 2021 includes this artificial intelligence based assistant in the user interface to predict the next commands uh, that you'll need based on what it is you're doing and where you are in that design. So for the Finimac machine, there's a lot of sheet metal work. And in 2021 here, it's learned uh, from, from this design engineer. And rather than presenting tools that are you know, commonly used maybe in, in the overall industry, uh, which would be nice, uh, but it's actually instead presenting tools commonly used for this specific individual. And that's really excellent. It, it's tailored to you, as you can see, and it'll continue to learn from you. It'll dynamically improve how it you know, holds your hand basically through your day-to-day -day work. It's really interesting to watch. Uh, hopefully you all can see, but it's dynamically presenting the next selection of tools and commands, even across environments. So as we go from sheet metal to sketch and back, it's presenting you specific commands. Now, as I said at the start, uh, you know, keep your eyes on the top left of the screen. It's just one toolbar. This means you can, you know, if you really wanted to, you could remove uh, the entire ribbon bar to maximize your workspace because what you need is right there, ready when you are. Now, as you saw, uh, you know, we're harnessing the power of artificial intelligence, which, you know, we see all around us nowadays. You can see how it can even be applied to your daily work in CAD in Solid Edge. It's, it's personalized for you. It learns from you, you know, and, and what it does the first day, it's, it's obviously going to be much different than what it will prompt you for in a week or a month because it's learning from you. And the great thing about this is you can even share it with others in your company. So even though uh, your work may be uh, slightly differently. Um, you know, you can actually share it uh, with uh, other engineers and give them a head start, maybe a new intern or uh, a new hire. You can share this and, and they can basically start learning your, your process. Now in the area of core CAD enhancements, uh, there's been a lot of work. As I said, there's no way we can cover everything uh, in, you know, in under an hour, but I wanna show you a few more things uh, that'll really help in your day-to-day -day work. So back into the Finimac uh, Popsicle machine here. Uh, the name of the machine itself is actually Pop Circle. Pretty, uh, pretty creative, I like it. So first off, uh, we're going to use this large assembly mode here to make the most of uh, our computer's resources and keep things performing as we expect. You can see that in the top left. Now, there's much more to help with performance here. It's very common for suppliers to give a 3D file of purchase items, such as this uh, piston assembly. Now, using this new internal components option, all separate parts are contained within one single assembly file. There's no separate parts written to disk. So this enables you know, really fast import times, especially on these larger data sets that you may be working with. Now, even though all these parts are internal, uh, you can still carry out many of your traditional operations, like taking measurements, uh, analyzing mechanisms. Uh, here we can see the correct operation of that piston assembly with its internal components. 
Uh, furthermore, you can actually assemble uh, these items and the way they would work if it were a regular assembly. Uh, so as you can see, you know, much better performance and lower consumption of memory here. Uh, reusing designs is even easier. As you see here, when you copy and paste multiple parts and assemblies between designs, all those relationships are automatically captured and reused in that target assembly. And the step-by-step -step process guides you as you can see through those operations to add those external and all the internal relationships. There's a new multi-edge flange command uh, that really speeds up the process for designing sheet metal parts. Multiple edges can be selected at the same time. You can define an angle and miters uh, can be automatically added as you see. It's as simple as picking the edges and then pushing and pulling. Furthermore, you can actually Customize these to be partial or centered flanges. Uh, you can add trim options uh, to make tasks that would normally require much, a few more operations uh, right away. You can even add offsets and gap distances. Now these sheet metal enhancements along with many others, uh, of course, increase your day-to-day -day productivity and efficiency. There's this new decal command, as you can see. It makes it very quick and easy to add labels and images to your parts. You simply select that image, uh, set the desired size you want and position it accurately using your regular sketch relationships and dimensions. And it can even span across multiple faces, as you saw there. And you could, of course, change the position by simply modifying that relationship or dimension. Now, 2021 also has enhancements to the frame environment. So here we'll place a cross frame, which has coping applied so that it matches that circular cross section of the vertical frame. Now we can specify a weld gap between two frames. This is really important for generating uh, accurate lengths for your welded frames and, and, and your parts list. And now here we're looking at the new end caps command. This lets you quickly create uh, end caps for your frames. It's a single command and you have tons of options, of course, to select the frame cross section, the, the material, the type, whether it's inward or outward, and even add offsets or chamfer corners. And the end caps are, of course, reflected in your bill of materials eliminating any extra work for the, uh, for the drafter. All right, so <laughs> lots of good stuff there. Uh, and again, that's just a preview to be honest, but we saw a couple of things like large assembly performance, uh, internalizing components when you're importing these you know, big assemblies from a, from a supplier or customer. And of course, sheet metal advances are, are, are always uh, great. All right, here's a quick quote from uh, Luca Carminati from CMS. So they've uh, been doing a lot with sheet metal and they really like the new multi-flange and auto trimming options. That's gonna save them a lot of time. All right, next up, uh, what about supplier catalogs? Now you're often getting different parts and data from your suppliers. Uh, different people make different products, uh, which you may be incorporating into your designs. But what if, that were, what if there was an easy way uh, to find a bunch of different uh, models and information to use in your design. Well, let's check it out. 3D Find It. Uh, this is uh, built right into Solid Edge, as you can see. It's powered by Cadenas. Uh, this is the latest search engine for mechanical, electrical, and, and electronics engineering. So here we're searching for a cable gland using text. Uh, we can narrow down the filter uh, by supplier. We can add additional search terms like filtering ISO, uh, even geometry, sketches, and so on. We can visualize that 3D model for the part, even the 2D drawings, uh, choose the parameters, and just plop it right into your solid edge assembly. So as you can see, tons of time saved by reusing parts that already exist out there. Uh, the problem was just finding them. Uh, but now with 2021 being able to find those suppliers you're used to working with and getting those products directly from them will really simplify your process. This 3D Find It tool uh, gives you access to more than 1,500 CAD and BIM catalogs and has really interesting ways to search, as, as you just saw. And it's fully integrated with Team Center as well. Here's Jason. Uh, Jason again talking about uh, this new capability and how it's really uh, gonna, going to save them a lot of time not having to build parts, rework parts, but simply use what's already out there. Now, there was a lot of stuff in mechanical design we just saw, uh, more than we could possibly cover here in the hour. But I, I really, again, uh, I'm inviting you to uh, to look at those what's new documentations once it's released here in a few weeks. 
but again, Solid Edge is not just mechanical design. Uh, we talked about the digital twin earlier. Uh, so you should really uh, look at your business and think, how can I be more productive, not only with mechanical design, but how can I expand my efforts? Can we go further in our production process, perhaps? Or can we go sideways into electrical design, right? In what ways uh, can you become more productive as a company by using all these tools uh, to enable this digital transformation? So electrical design is becoming a lot more integrated with, with our mechanical design. And I'm about to talk about that electrical mechanical design, but before I do that, I just wanna say when I first saw this picture here, I thought it was a real product. Uh, it's not. Uh, this is another digital twin of a control panel. It, it's really amazing what Solid Edge is capable of these days. Of course, there's a lot to talk about with electrical design. Uh, and first up is wiring design. Now there's an important thing coming with Solid Edge 2021 and that's cabinet and panel design. It's a whole different thing when you're, work, when you're wiring a tractor or a car than it is when you're creating industrial control panels and cabinets uh, that, that may be going into the machines you're designing. Now there's a full complement of tools there. So here we are in solid edge wiring and harness design. We're going to add the existing uh, electrical design work to this uh, Finimac machine by laying out the machine's control panel. Solid Edge 2021 has this new cabinet panel capability that allows you to reuse this schematic intelligence to generate this panel layout. Placing the correctly sized cabinet uh, based on your specs, uh, we can add additional items such as back plates, uh, channels, uh, mounts, and other hardware. All right, so as you can see, very easy to place all of these components. Now we also need some wiring decks. So here we're placing a series of channels. Uh, we have dynamic, dynamic uh, dimensions that give you accurate feedback. And you have industry standard profiles available as well. Next here, we're using the mount command and we'll add the necessary DIN rails uh, to which we'll be attaching electrical components. Again, accessing those properties uh, allows you to choose from those industry standard sizes and profiles. You can add dimensions uh, to the mounting plate as well as to the channels and rails uh, that will help document their positions. Now associating the new layout design to the schematic allows us to place the relevant logical electrical components. Placing these devices is simple as you can see there are many ways uh, you can do this. We can place single objects or multiple objects at the same time. You have different shortcuts uh, such a control snapping, rotations, order placements, and so on. Now, the last few pieces were placed on top and bottom. And then we've, uh, we're creating a bill of materials that's fully customizable. It's automatically built uh, as you add devices to the layout design. You can very quickly add uh, bill of material IDs uh, and balloons. And finally is the terminal plan. That assists in the, assembly, in the assembly and wiring of the terminal strips. Uh, this is fully associative. They're automatically generated. All of these terminal blocks are documented for you, along with their symbols, a physical sequence in the strip, and the details of where the wires terminate at both ends of the block. Now here, what you're looking at is the electromechanical design, right? This is connected mode. So we're combining this ECAD and MCAD worlds. Right, so as we work in both models, we can see them update accordingly. Right, so you can see cross highlighting between the two different electrical and mechanical models. Now here we're adding some final conductors to connect the two cabinets. We can bundle these wires together. And to keep it nice and neat in that assembly, there's a new route along surface command that'll give you a very efficient way to route that bundle along the contours of the frame. All right, as you can see, all you did was pick bundle, select the faces, and the bundle very nicely routes along those surfaces. Just watching that uh, is, is really amazing to me when I first saw it. I mean, the amount of productivity you have in terms of laying out the cabinets and panels is really re remarkable. Now, if you're doing something uh, you know, very manual right now, you're uh, really gonna see uh, incredible improvements to your productivity with, with a tool like this. So what you saw was, of course, the fully customizable table-based interface for, uh, for the device snapping uh, to rails and so on. 
And we didn't get a chance to look at it, but there's also an auto routing capability for schematics that will save you even more time. And by the way, this is all upwards compatible to the Magic Graphics line of products, so the full blown uh, capital tools as well. Now you get a glimpse of the routing along the irregular surface geometry. It could even be a sculpted shape, maybe something you did uh, using this new uh, sub-D modeling. Uh, connected mode uh, and electrical routing has been extended. Uh, so it's not only working with solid edge wiring and harness design, but also with that capital tool from Mentor Graphics I mentioned. And it's also uh, integrated to more third party, uh, third party products as well. Now in the area of harness design, uh, just to be clear, when I talk about harness design here, I'm not talking about the 3D efforts that, that the mechanical engineers are, are thinking of. A harness design here is also something you do in 2D. You know, how are you gonna lay out the harness for production? So when we talk about harness design, that, that's what I'm talking about. You have the ability to visualize that in Team Center now as well and tie it back to requirements. That gives you tracing uh, to those requirements. It's uh, fully interactive, again, with that auto uh, routing, as I mentioned. Now, next up is a PCB. Some really great stuff with, uh, with your printed circuit boards. Uh, it's all about that collaboration, right, between the electrical and mechanical and the ability to bring the design aspects back and forth between them, maybe uh, propose a design change uh, and either accept or reject it. And that's all supported through the IDX uh, 2.7 format. Uh, Solid 2021 also supports the, the mapping of 3D models uh, between the Mentor uh, Expedition product and Solid Edge. And we're seeing a lot of traction here with, uh, with some customers who are uh, already using some of these tools. Uh, you know, people like uh, Matthew Fresco here uh, at WashTech, uh, they're already taking advantage of this electromechanical capability uh, to really get much closer to this digital twin. It's not just mechanical, it's a, it's a digital twin that includes the electrical design and really solves a bunch of problems that are found uh, you know, too late you know, out in the field. All righty, next up is simulation. A lot going on here as well. Now, of course, we've had uh, products for many years now for stress analysis, modes and vibrations, uh, flow analysis, all sorts of different things. Uh, but you're going to see some great integration between the structural and flow simulations uh, happening in, in 2021. So back to the pop circle machine. Now, SimCenter Flow EFD for Solid Edge features uh, new capabilities and modules for electronics cooling applications. There's this new package creator uh, specializes in the rapid creation of accurate thermal models of electronic packages. Right, and you get very accurate definition of your chip layers, uh, your solder balls on the chips, and so on. Here we can clearly see the thermal effect uh, on this PCB board, and in turn its effect on the overall electronic enclosure. So looking at the flow trajectories around the fan area, this shows how the fan swirls, right? And it's it's getting pushed back uh, to the sides to cool the overall enclosure. Now we can also see how the fan is performing uh, with the fan curve you see. Now we can look at the operating point uh, of the individual fans based on that fan curve data from the manufacturer. Next are isosurfaces. That's another way of illustrating where airflow is going and showing that velocity as a volume plot. All right, next in 2021, uh, you will now have the ability to apply those results from the CFD flow study as an input to structural or thermal. So here we're focusing on the tank containing the liquid bath that freezes the popsicles. And if we look at the results of this thermal flow study, we see how the cooling liquid interacts with the assembly. Now these results can be sent to a structural simulation using this export results command. All right, so after a quick export, let's, let's go ahead and get that structural analysis set up. Now a few enhancements uh, there as well. So now you can suppress or remove components directly from the simulation pathfinder as we define the material uh, for the insulating core. I'll point out uh, a new feature here. As you can see, it actually highlights the, the properties that you need for that particular study. And the last step before solving the structural study is to import those flow EFD pressures or, or thermal results. Now, these are automatically applied to the correct bodies and faces in your study. And the result, we can see where the pressure from the cooling liquid is causing 
high stress areas on our design. And one final thing, a new in Solid Edge 2021 is the ability to probe edges. Uh, so you don't have to manually uh, pick node after node after node. You can now select edges, making it much easier for you to get some results out. As I said, I, I've been uh, I've been in this industry for a while now, doing simulation, uh, and and I'm still amazed by all these new enhancements. I mean, the, the the these new features around flow simulation and integrating that with the stress simulation is really amazing. They just keep enhancing solid simulation. Um, you know, the way you interact with materials, being able to remove components now from the study, uh, being able to probe the geometry and nodes to you know get some some tabular data very quickly. Uh, it's some really nice enhancements there. In addition to that, you saw the new electronics uh, electronics cooling center I showed you uh, very briefly. Uh, it has a full suite of capabilities. Um, now, there's one other thing uh, called BCI ROM, which may not mean much to you right now, but what it should mean is months to minutes. Uh, this is really amazing technology. Uh, a study that would have literally taken six weeks of CPU time can be done in three minutes now. And in those uh, three minutes, you'll be within 5% of what those uh, six weeks would have given you. It's truly amazing stuff coming out of the team here. And uh, if, if you haven't, um, I, I definitely uh, welcome you to take a deeper look at this. All right, next up is manufacturing, accelerating your product development, right? Whether it's additive, subtractive, or both, Solid Edge has the tools for you. So let's look at Solid Edge Cam Pro. New in 2021 is uh, this integrated post hub. It's an online library of post processors that makes uh, integration with your machinery easy and quick. Uh, new posts are added regularly. Uh, it's searchable. You have filters for the machine type, manufacturer, controller type, uh, and uh, kinematic configuration. Now, once you've selected the post, uh, it can be automatically downloaded and installed, and then verifying the post output is uh, simple. All right, Solid Edge Cam Pro now has multi-axis roughing, which is a great tool for quickly removing stock from parts like the Aerospace one you see here. Multi-axis roughing uses adaptive roughing technology to uh, machine parts uh, really in the most efficient manner. And viewing the multi-axis roughing path in replay mode allows visualization of a tool axis tilting as the cutting tool removes the material. The 3D dynamic simulation option shows uh, the tool motion and simultaneous material removal. Notice how the multi-axis roughing efficiently removes material without ever burying the tool in the cut. That's, of course, uh, extremely important for efficient machining. And with uh, machining simulation, you can view the actual machine motion. Uh, this gives you very high confidence level and, and is necessary for complicated multi-axis machining centers like you see here. And Solid Edge Cam Pro supports G-code based uh, simulation, meaning the virtual machining center you have is, is acting upon the G-code just like the real machine would. So as you can see, Siemens uh, really continues pushing both the additive and subtractive manufacturing forward. Uh, getting access to proven posts for your CNC machine uh, has been a common industry issue, but now it's, it's much easier with the Post Hub library. You saw the multi-axis roughing, uh, which is really state-of-the-art. Uh, they've also added some things in additive manufacturing. Uh, we don't have much time to look at that today, uh, but it now provides better material selection for your 3D uh, printing needs, for example. And there's also some additive checkers uh, in one uh, overall tool that make it, uh, they really make it very easy to interact with and verify your, your 3D prints. Now, a lot of you do sheet metal, and we talked a little bit about that earlier, but another part of manufacturing is nesting, the ability to lay those flattened sheet metal parts out in the most efficient way possible. And we have the most efficient algorithm in the industry for doing that. And I want to mention some of the new enhancements in that area. If your machines and assemblies, uh, kind of like this one, consist uh, largely of sheet metal parts, uh, maybe varying materials, varying thicknesses, you'll really benefit here. So let's look at this 2D nesting. It can now search the complete assembly for the different uh, sheet metal uh, documents. It automatically sorts the parts by material type and thickness. So you choose that material type and thickness and then quickly make those patterns for multiple jobs even. 
So this really enhances the efficiency of the shop floor. The flat patterns are automatically extracted from the parts, saving tons of time there. And assembly occurrence counts uh, automatically define the part quantities. You also have a job multiplier that quickly calculates the amount needed to manufacture multiple machines. This 2D nesting supports multiple sheet sizes as well. So you have some standard sheet sizes stored in the library, but you can easily define your own custom sizes as well. And here you can see 2D nesting doing its thing. I mean, it, it's just so impressive. Uh, it's finding the most efficient use of material. Now that savings in material costs, not even mentioning time, uh, that all, all those uh, improvements uh, for this very highly efficient algorithm will uh, see a quick ROI. And last but not least, uh, this 2D nesting has a new quick cost estimator. So you have some user-defined cost per square meter or yard, for example, that you can add, and the 2D nesting will quickly generate the accurate uh, cost of material that's needed for, uh, let's say, job cost accounting, quoting, uh, even inventory. All right, so this 2D nesting is a great opportunity to improve your sheet metal processes while saving a lot of money. As I said, it uses the most efficient, the most efficient algorithm in the industry, and they've enhanced it this year to deal with odd-shaped sheets, like you see in the upper right here. So the ability to nest something on maybe cloth or leather, for example, things that have an odd boundary, those are now supported. Adding the cost of material and the job multiplier just makes it a lot easier for you to get uh, your job done. You can sort by material or thickness. That's a very nice feature. So I really uh, suggest you take a look at this 2D nesting if your company does a lot of sheet metal. Next up is technical publications. Now, over the years, um, you've, of course, generated tons of solid edge data. Now, what if you could take advantage of that and generate beautiful technical publications very easily? Well, it's faster than ever here in solid edge 2021. So here we'll see how we can put together an interactive maintenance publication, something that used to be on, uh, you know, you can use it on touchscreen tablet uh, by the maintenance department, for example. So there's a whole bunch of new and improved functionalities that make it simple to create these uh, very clear technical publications. Maybe it's for manufacturing, installation, or maintenance, uh, like we're doing here. And it can be interactive content like this or hard, co uh, hard copy paper uh, print as well. You have new selection capabilities here in uh, tech pubs uh, that allows you to organize uh, into groups of parts and sub-assemblies and to name sets, uh, making it much easier and faster to select, show, hide different parts at the same time. So here we're looking at uh, the single mold assembly to build a document that describes the cleaning process. We have this new carousel function uh, that makes it easy to navigate uh, through these illustrations uh, within a storyboard. Uh, and creating this interactive view you see here is very fast and easy. You can add multiple views on a single page, selecting it on the right, uh, displays it on the left. And the next page uh, includes uh, some step-by-step -step instructions for cleaning the mold assembly. Uh, the best way to visualize this process is to mimic it through an exploded view, right? Uh, we can add dynamic text boxes uh, giving the user instructions. You can add buttons to step through the process. That's very quick and easy using the new uh, manual markup resizing options. And uh, not only can you import uh, the native solid edge exploded views, but you can create those custom exploded views right within uh, tech pubs here. Now adding an interactive parts list is very simple as dragging and dropping. It's automatically displayed based on that 3D metadata. And there's also a powerful new parts list editor that makes it easy to customize that table. You can add an illustration table, that allows you to quickly switch between the collapsed and exploded views of the assembly. You can publish these to uh, industry standard formats like 3D PDF or HTML5. As you can see, uh, it's uh, very nicely viewed in just about any web browser without any additional plugins. All right, there's also uh, another functionality, which is clickable SVGs, uh, scalable vector graphics. It's just another format uh, that you can publish to. Uh, it's interactive, as you can see. So when the part is selected, uh, the corresponding row in the table will be highlighted as well. So with TechBubs, uh, you can see uh, that you can really take advantage of the data you already have. 
you know, uh, some customers are, are generating millions of parts. Um, so the ability to use that in your technical publications is, is very valuable. So this tech bug now has faster performance, it's integrated with Team Center, and you saw uh, some of those new features like the carousel page object and the 3D, uh, the 360 degree uh, publishing tools. Now that of course leads us into data management. Now as I just mentioned, you've, uh, you've all been generating tons of data over the years. So whether you're a company that has two seats, maybe 200 seats, you're fully covered with Solid Edge's scalable data management solutions. So let's jump right in looking at uh, the new concept modeling workflow used uh, for this popsicle mold. This concept workspace is a space where a designer can explore new ideas without committing those files to Team Center. It's basically a sandbox where you have uh, the freedom to make any changes to a design without compromising the existing models. So here we'll create two uh, new concepts of our design. We can then explore the first concept uh, for a new mold retaining mechanism. Uh, maybe we'll remove some existing components, make some changes, uh, delete features, add some new ones. All right, so we'll use this first concept as a starting point, but then we can go ahead and create uh, another one and that can be uh, explored later. So the designer has the freedom to create as many concepts as desired as you saw there. Now with the focus still on the uh, first concept, we can add the appropriate uh, mold retaining components to finish uh, the first assembly concept. And going back into the uh, concept assistant here, we can switch to concept two and open that design data. Here we can assemble the different uh, mold retaining components for this idea. And once that concept is finalized, all that data can be sent into Team Center. So the concept assistant uh, helps with this process. As you can see, it gives you options to filter for new or modified components, uh, even revert any changes made. And there's this 3D compare tool you just saw. Uh, it's a visual check on the changes between the concept and, and the, uh, the design version. You have full control over uh, all of those actions for any modified components. Now, once everything is defined, uh, you put that data uh, seamlessly back into Team Center. And now in 2021 is the integration of model-based definition, right? So all of that downstream manufacturing information included in the MBD uh, PDF output, it's automatically captured by Team Center and visible within the atom revision of the part or assembly. Now in Solid Edge's built-in data management, there's a new open as. Uh, so that lets you control exactly how a file is open from either Windows Explorer or the recently used menu. So this gives you full control over how you open an assembly, like the configuration, the read-only status, large assembly options, and so on. There's a new shape search capability that lets you uh, more efficiently reuse existing models and prevent you know, recreating designs from scratch. You can use an existing part or even model a basic representation like we did here as the basis of this search you see. So it'll scan the available database for similar looking parts and you have filters available to approximate uh, that criteria. So the shape search results are compared with the original part. Uh, the accuracy is displayed uh, as a percentage. Once you find it, uh, you just click and open it into your uh, assembly. So a lot of stuff there in data management, of course. Uh, we saw the shape search. Uh, it's a new product that allows you to reuse data you already have right, because there's nothing more inefficient than recreating something you've already designed or built. You know, you've got maybe 100,000 parts, maybe a million parts. How are you going to know if you have it? Well, you can now uh, find out through this new shape search. They've also enhanced Pack and Go, which is a very popular Solid Edge feature. Hope, hopefully you all use that. Uh, that allows you to trace the links even outside uh, your current context, your current directory, and grab all of the parts uh, for, a, uh, for an assembly. And then the new open as command is super handy. It's uh, uh, you know, nothing uh, extravagant, uh, but very simple things like this really improve your day-to-day -day workflow, being able to access that open as menu right from uh, the, your Solid Edge's main recent file screen or even Windows Explorer. All right, we also saw inside of Team Center the concept modeler. That's a really great new technology, being able to make changes and try, you know, what if scenarios without committing part numbers and deciding where, whether it's a brand new part or revision to an existing part. 
Uh, wire harness and alternate position assemblies can now be visualized in the Team Center portal. And uh, you also have local component support in Solid Edge that's fully integrated into Team Center as well. Next up is cloud based collaboration. The more and more we're seeing people around the world having to collaborate, maybe at a table, collaborate across uh, the overall business in different locations, collaborating with customers and suppliers. Right? The cloud, of course, enables all of this. And there's some great new capabilities for this cloud based collaboration. So, uh, it being browser based means that you can use this on any device, your phone, tablet, or PC. And it also works with any common uh, CAD file type. It's not just Solid Edge, it could be NX or other common neutral file formats that you might work with, like Parasolid or Step. It being browser based also means it's instant on. Uh, but we can improve that productivity in terms of a guidance. So here there's a user assisted guide that basically holds your hand each step of the way uh, in using any of the capabilities in this app. So here we're setting up a new project. It's guiding us to upload files into this project into the cloud storage. Now we can do this in two ways, either directly into the browser or I'm going to show you some desktop synchronization in a minute. This data here could be PowerPoint, Word, PDFs. Uh, for CAD files, we've got an integrated 3D view environment. We can uh, hide and show components with the tree on the right-hand side. And there's other great tools here, such as Automatic Explode. So we can understand the assembly makeup. Uh, this is great for manufacturing, design reviews, and so on. There's no pre-setup explode needed for this. It's also got great tools like section views or cutaway tools. Now, if you want to take measurements on the fly, there's another tool for that. Notice how easy the interface is. It's not technical, as you can see. So it's not just for design engineers. It could, for example, be used in a sales situation. Nice and easy to get to any of the product features inside. Here we're taking measurements on the fly. We can even change units as well. Uh, in the interface, we can add markups, uh, comments. Uh, there's tools to do redlining. We can choose from pre-selected shapes or just do some freehand sketching as well on top of the 3D model even. We can include text annotations. And all of these markups get recorded in the tree. Now, what's great about that is you can start to have uh, almost a conversation back and forth on any of the issues you may be tracking, or maybe it's uh, positive sales points about the product that you want to call out. And it records who made that markup and when it was made. Now, I talked about the option of getting data into your cloud storage. We looked at uploading it into the browser uh, just a minute ago, but what's also available is desktop synchronization. We've got this multi-CAD project here on our desktop. That's uh, represented simply as a folder, as you can see. Now, any data that we bring into this folder, either drag and dropping it or saving it from Solid Edge, will get synchronized in the background as you work with the app. And another great capability in this app is sharing with whoever you like. It's nice and easy. Just simply type in the email address of the person you want to share it with. You can uh, choose the access permission level that you want to grant. For example, you can choose just view or view and download. Uh, so here you can uh, protect that intellectual property, of course. And finally, we have augmented reality. Now this will take the 3D CAD model and superimpose it into the physical environment around you. It'll snap onto any surfaces that are seen through the camera lens and to scale, by the way. And then finger gestures, of course, can be used to manipulate that model. So here, these, uh, this orange juicer was really big, as, as you saw at first. So it's a great use of this augmented reality to get that immediate design feedback. So we saw some great new stuff in cloud-based collaboration. Again, your organization has been expanding. You have people in different locations, maybe all around the world. Uh, you have customers, suppliers. So pulling all that together through this new cloud-based collaboration app allows you to synchronize files automatically because you can just drag and drop on your desktop and they're automatically uploaded. Uh, you can do a viewer markup as you saw. You can communicate with your customers or suppliers. And of course, it's all secure. You can share it with whomever, but also keep your intellectual property safe with the, with the permissions we saw. And lastly, augmented reality. So the ability to mix the physical world with the digital world. Very, very powerful. Now, some customers are already trying this out in early access. Uh, PJ uh, from Rurock Industries had this to say about it. He's got a, a 
very spread out uh, design and manufacturing team. Uh, so his ability to use the new cloud uh, collaboration tools allows them to communicate uh, across the globe very quickly and easily. And I think uh, most of you will find the same. You've seen uh, tons of new uh, enhancements here in SolidEdge 2021. There's mechanical design, electrical design, technical publications, data management, a full suite of tools. Uh, so I really encourage you to start this digital transformation journey today. Uh, if, you, uh, if you've already started, maybe take the next step, right? Integrate manufacturing, integrate electrical, and so on. The sky is really the limit. So uh, what, are the, what are the ways we can get started right now? Well, the easiest way is to join the Solid Edge Community Forum. Hopefully you're all on there. If not, uh, please uh, take a look at that. Uh, just search for Solid Edge Community and you'll find uh, you can explore blogs, you can go to the forum, uh, you can learn in the knowledge base and interact with people uh, who are on there uh, every day. And we also have uh, an action for you and that's to help bring Solid Edge to education uh, and, and communities around us. Siemens uh, is providing the Solid Edge product portfolio free to academic institutions and even uh, providing new learning assets and certifications. So uh, we could really use your design expertise uh, to join forces and help uh, with these academic institutions and, and the communities around us. Finally, we talked about the next generation cloud collaboration. Uh, an important uh, point to make is that this is actually available right now uh, in early access. So if you scan that QR code on the screen or go to that link, uh, you can uh, start using it uh, right away. All right, so a couple of uh, final takeaways. As Andrea mentioned, when we first started, uh, there are a couple of um, handouts, uh, PDFs provided here in this uh, GoTo uh, webinar panel. Uh, one of them is uh, highlights of Solid Edge 2021 that I've just gone over, as well as another PDF that kind of outlines the, the different capabilities uh, per version. And you may be thinking, when is this going to be released? Well, there's no exact date, unfortunately, but within the next several weeks, we'll be seeing uh, this amazing new Solid Edge 2021. And of course, we'll be ready to assist with upgrading as always. And with that, I'll hand it back over to Andrea. Thanks, Dan. All right, lots of great information there. If you all have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to us at um, marketing at saratech.com. That's a good way to um, just kind of send questions and comments to an inbox that we can make sure that it gets to the right engineers. Um, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.